الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه والسراج منيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القران المجيد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فان مع العسر يسرا ان مع العسر يسرا صدق الله العلي العظيم we begin by saying alhamdulillah all praises due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his bounty for his mercy for his rahma for his hidayah upon us It will be surprising if a disaster occurs in the world especially a natural disaster and it does not involve Muslims today because it seems that whenever there are a group of people who have to undergo some adversity some difficulty that undoubtedly that group of people are going to be some Muslim somewhere around the world If we just look back at what has happened over the last few months the turmoil of Tunisia and Egypt and Libya and now Syria and we look at what happened in Pakistan last year we look at what happened in Somalia this year we look at what is happening in Somalia we look at what now is happening in Pakistan where floods are killing people and thousands and hundreds of thousands are homeless again muslims are always under some form of adversity some scholars would write and if someone is to ask the question why many times people would look at the fact that this may be a warning or a punishment for the muslims because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided the muslims towards that way of life which will be successful and by and large in many of the muslim majority areas of the world many of the sins that we shun away from are prevalent there in a surprisingly high incidence things like gambling pornography consumption of alcohol and so on and so forth so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does tell us dhahra al fasad fi al bari wal bahri bima kasabat aydin nas that the fasad and the fitna the difficulties and the trials that we face are because of what the man the hands of man has bought his own sins has bought his difficulty But that is not to say that we can definitely pinpoint every adversity and blame it on mankind himself. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala may punish a people with adversity so that he can remind them so that they can turn to the right way he may punish them so that he will not punish them in the hereafter. He may punish them as a warning so that they will turn away in the future. But for all of the people who are embroiled in these difficulties that is no consolation there is no consolation for the man or the woman or the child who has now become homeless in Pakistan because of the floods there is no consolation for the relatives of the many many thousands of people who have been killed in places like Syria by their own according to the reports government forces but perhaps there is consolation for them from the verses of the holy quran because perhaps allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offers some consolation to them allah says for example in surah baqarah a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يأتكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم 
Kalau min qablikum masat humul ba'sa wa dhawa'u wa zulzilu wa zulzilu hatta yakula rasulu wal ladhina amanu ma'ahu mata nasurullah Ala inna nasurullahi qareeb Do you think that you will enter paradise? Allah is speaking to the Muslims Who's going to enter into paradise? The believers? Do you think that you will enter paradise despite that there have not yet come upon you circumstances as of those who have passed away before you? Do you think that you can enter paradise scotch-free, without any difficulty, without any trial, without any adversity, without any hardship? They were afflicted by hardship, Allah says, about those nations that came before this Ummah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were afflicted with hardship and suffering and were so shaken, Allah says, so shaken down, shaken meaning that they may have been earthquakes that would have affected them as well, or shaken in their Iman, that their faith was tested, or that their resolve was tested, if not their faith, or their patience was tested, so shaken that the Prophet, of course the Iman of the Prophet couldn't be shaken, but the patience of the Prophet, that the Prophet Allah says, and those who believe with him, began to say, Mata Nasrullah, when will the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come? When will the help of Allah come? Not meaning that we are losing our Islam, they were losing their Islam, but they were asking for the help of Allah to come sooner. They were asking Allah to end that hardship and difficulty. And Allah says, Allah inna nasrullahi qadeeb. Behold the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is near. So sometimes a consolation can be made by us as Muslims when we have to undergo adversity as a nation, as an ummah, as a people, or even as individuals when we put up our hardships against the hardships of those who came before us and compare and when we compare and we look at what they went through and when we look at what we go through that ingrown toenail that causes us so much of pain and suffering that we can hardly bear it and we abandon our salah because of it is nothing compared to the hardships that others went through for the sake of their religion and their way of life. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went once when one of the companions, Qabab, an, asked him to evoke Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's help. He spoke about the people who came before you, one person, a per people who came before you would undergo such difficulty that they would take a saw and put it in the middle of his head and cut him all the way down to his feet and comb his skin and fat with combs of iron and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said and they would not leave their religion and if you look at the history of Islam and if you look at what Islam has written about the Anbiya alayhi salam, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has taught us about the Anbiya alayhi salam, we know that they and their nations had to undergo all kinds of difficulties that we ourselves perhaps couldn't face today. That a flood or an earthquake or a hurricane or a tornado or some other kind of adversity would be far less difficult than what they had to face. And we know as well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests people as well and puts them through adversity so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can test their metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, -T -T -E, their metal, their strength, their resolve, their determination to hold on to this deen. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a very interesting hadith, Ashaddun nas 
Bila al anbiya The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the people who are most severely tested, they are the prophets, the anbiya alaihi salam. Thumma salihun, thumma salih, salihin. Salihun, the righteous ones. After the prophets, the righteous ones are tested. Thummal amthalu fal amthal. Then the best, after the salihun, after the righteous ones, the best ones after them. And then the best ones after them. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Yubatala rajulu ala hasabid deen. Hasabid deenihi. That a man will be tested in accordance with the degree, the hasab and the degree and the level of his religion, of his deen, of his religious commitment. Because if he is not very religiously inclined, what is the sense to test that strength of his iman? Because he, he can be taken away very easily by his own nafs or, his, or the shaitan. And then the Prophet sallallahu says, فَإِنْ كَانَ فِي دِينِهِ صَلَابَةٌ زِيدَ لَهُ فِي الْبَلَاءِ And that the stronger that is his religious commitment or his deen, the stronger will be his test. So this is another way of looking at adversity and difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to know how strong is our resolve. How strong is our Iman? How strong is our tawakkul? How much do we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So you're going to put tests in our way. And the more righteous ones may be tested the most. Now of course some people will say, but so and so lived his life and he never received any tests it seems. So there are different levels of tests and Allah decides who he's going to test. The first level of testing of course is with our own nafs to overcome that, to control that. And then different levels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test people with different things, with different kinds of loss, different kinds of adversities. And we see in the examples not just of the prophets, but of the great personalities, that even though they were filled with knowledge, even though they had great status, they had to undergo tests and sometimes the tests came through Muslims, not through natural disasters alone. For example, one of the greatest Jewists of his time, the Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa used to have to undergo all kinds of tests as well. When he lived in the Umayyad period, among the Umayyad Khalifs, the governor of Kufa, Ibn Ubayra, called Imam Abu Hanifa told him that he must be the Qadi of Kufa. Imam Abu Hanifa refused. So Ibn Ubayra said that I swear by Allah that you are going to be the, 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 the Qadi, the chief judge. And Imam Abu Hanifa said, I swear by Allah I'm not going to be it. So then Ibn Ubayra caused him to be brought in front of him and told him you have to be the Qadi. He is, he is, Considering Imam Abu Hanifa to be the greatest jurist, the greatest judge in the area of the time, and therefore he wants him to be the chief judge. But Abu, Imam Abu Hanifa knew that he wanted him to be the chief judge so that when Ibn Ubayra passes a law and the chief judge assents to it, then it will be okay. It will be accepted. But he didn't want that because then Innocent people could die. Innocent people could be die because even Ubayra has said he is deserving of death, and Abu Hanifa has agreed. He is the chief judge. So even Ubayra said, bought him, and he said, "I will whip you on your head until you die." And Abu Hanifa said, "You can only kill me once. Go ahead. You can only kill me once. That was their resolve. Look at the test that has been put in front of him." He could have said, well, I am a big Jewist, I have a lot of work to do. Let me just become the chief judge. 
His companions told him, some of his companions who had already accepted the position, told him, go ahead and take it. He refused. He was struck three times on his head. Three times on his head with the whip. And then he said to Ibn Ubayra, just as you have disgraced me today, Allah will disgrace you on the day of judgment. And Ibn Ubayra, he stopped because of that statement. Later on in his life, when the Imam was 70 years old, he again was tested in this very same manner. But this time it was the Khalif of the Muslims, the Amir al Mu'mineen, Abu Jafar al Mansur. He asked, Who is the most knowledgeable of the people? Who is the most qualified to be the judge? And he was told, Imam Abu Huraira, Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Abu Hanifa was brought and he said to him, you become the judge, the chief judge. He said, I will not. He said, I swear to you, you will become it. I said, he said, I swear that I will not. So the companions said, become the judge, otherwise he will punish you. Go back on what you have sworn. He said, no, let him go back on what he has sworn. He has more money. He can pay the kafara more. He can pay the kafara for breaking his swear. He refused. He was brought again. He was whipped in front of the people. He refused to become the chief judge. Now he's not being told to do something haram. He's become, being told to accept the highest position, the chief judge. But he realized it was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because then he would have to agree and assent to those things that were wrong from the caliph. He refused and he was jailed. He was jailed and he was whipped every single day. And he was starved until he came close to death and then they poisoned him in the jail. Imam Abu Hanifa. And when he realized that he had been poisoned and he was going to die, he went in the position of sajda and he died in that position of sajda. He died believing and holding on to that position that he held on to and not acceding to something that was haram. That is the test. So everybody is tested in different ways. Nations are tested. People are tested. Natural disasters, man-made disasters. But we have got to hold on. And why have we got to hold on? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us in the Holy Quran. In the beginning of Surah Ankabut, chapter number 29, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام ميم أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون ولقد فتن الذين من قبل من قبلهم فلا يعلم الله الذين صدقوا ولا يعلم الكاذبين Allah says, Alif la Amim, do you think that they will be left at ease? That they will be left? That do people think? Do we as believers think that they will be left or we will be left at ease only on their saying, We believe. We believe. And we will not be put to the test. And Allah says, and we have surely tested those who were before them. So Allah will surely know the ones who are truthful. And he will surely know the liars. So the test, according to Hafiz Ibn Kathir, in his commentary on this verse, he says he will make it known who are sincere in their claim to be believers from those who are lying. Hafiz Ibn Kathir says that Allah means by this verse that He will make it known and clear as to those who are sincere in being believers in their claim from those who are lying. And therefore, when we are tested as well, the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may put us through is to show us as well are we sincere? Are we truthful? And if we have that truth, if we are truly believers in Allah, then we'll have that patience. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us under a test, whether it is a flood, whether it is an earthquake, 
whether it is a hurricane, whether we are made homeless, whether our loved one dies, whatever kind of tests we face, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test our resolve to see if we are sincere. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives the hope, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ that Certainly after or together with difficulty, there is going to be ease. Certainly with difficulty, there is ease. Or certainly after difficulty, there will come ease. So we just have to have that patience. So perhaps it can be a consolation to us as we look on and we see so many people undergoing so much adversity all over the world as Muslims that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing their resolve and testing their iman. And we pray and hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to give them that amount of hidayah. And all of us who have to undergo any kind of test in this life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us successful and that makes us truthful and gives us the jannah that he promises those who are strong and those who remain resolved and those who put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kulu kawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'id al-muslimina min kulli dhamb fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-gafuru rahim.